Welcome to Philosophy 15. I'm Scott Aiken. And I'm Robert Talese. We're the authors of Why We Argue and How We Should, A Guide to Political Disagreement. These are 15-minute philosophical conversations between two philosophy professors. Rob, we were gonna we were gonna talk about uh, two related phenomenon in the uh, or phenomena in uh, political discourse. So yeah, one of the things that um, seemed to be so prevalent in the the lead up to election day, but I don't think has really abated all that much uh, since. It's a sort of two closely related phenomenon. Maybe they're not always easy to tease apart, but it does seem that one of the one of the things that happens uh, with the with the, the the Trump camp administration surrogates and all the rest is um, a kind of uh, should we call it a fan dance? It's a, it's a weird kind right. of um, uh, something puzzling sounding, but not quite precise enough to be determinate in its meaning is is said, right? Um, so uh, something sloganistic, something uh, like uh, some term is introduced, like extreme vetting um, or alternative fact or so something gets said that sounds a little bit curious. It's deployed in a context where the context doesn't determine exactly what the newly introduced term is supposed to denote. And then um, a lot of time and effort uh, and ink and uh, bandwidth uh, is spent by journalists and political commentators trying to decipher what had been said or what the meaning of the, the claim has been. Um, and uh, by that time, when it can be evaluated, um, it's always open to the person in the administration to say, that's not what I meant at all. Yeah. Right? So that's one sort of phenomenon is the kind of um, what we call sort of spitballing. Something sort of nebulous is put out into the public discourse. It looks odd and maybe grotesque, um, <laughs> slimy, <a> yeah. slippery, <laughs> uh, and um, it's the job of you know uh, thousands and thousands of people. That's their job is to try to figure these things out and evaluate them, and then once um, some um, interpretation of the spitball is is defined with the level of precision that would be required in order to evaluate it, then it could just say, oh, I didn't say that. That's not what I meant. Right. right. So spitballing. And then there's a sort of um, complementing strategy that also is um, in evidence and, and prevalent, which we've called swamping. Right. Not draining the swamp. <laughs> which is an example of the kind of thing we're talking about. But yeah. swamping, which is to right. um, crowd the public discourse with spitballs, right? It's to um, it's sometimes even to introduce new spitballs as a way of deflecting the criticisms right. of the previous ones. So that this is a kind of like um, overload strategy. So the, 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 the spitballing strategy is, you know, introduce into the public discourse um, slippery, uh, underdetermined, uh, malleable and controversial and controversial terminology, then put more and more in, right? So that the public commentators, the journalists, the newscasters have to spend time figuring out what exactly was said in order to evaluate it, but then overload the whole process so that there is literally too much deciphering. There's too much sort of uh, um, code breaking, we might say, right. that needs to go on in order for them to competently do their job or to do their job. All the while, the strategies in combination, but also together, and always enable the escape hatch, right? That is that... Didn't yeah. That's not what I meant. Didn't you're fake. You're, you're right. fake. You're, you're not. Fake yeah, yeah. You're not a good journalist because that's not what extreme vetting is. Or I never said. 
Right. I X, never said. Y, or Z. Right. Um, uh, it's a, it's a real defect. <laughs> right. And it's a, and it's also a kind of, it's something that is a kind of an abuse of the bully pulpit. Yeah. Right. I mean, you have somebody who, I mean, you get, it only, it works only under conditions that people are paying attention. Right. Right. And so it's a, strategy of once you've got the spotlight to then work to monopolize it, right? So it wouldn't work if nobody was listening, right, it, it, antecedently. And so it's something that gets used that in some ways is like, and, and by the way, the, 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 that's a kind of an upstaging, right? That, and that's, in fact, what most of the folks who were at least in the Republican race we're constantly complaining about. It's like here we are. We're trying to discuss policy, and now like this guy tweets, and and nobody wants to come to my news conference, uh, <laughs> right? Uh, uh, so this was a regular. This was a regular complaint. Especially uh, Lindsey Graham had the had this problem where he 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 couldn't he couldn't catch a cold. Uh, I mean, there was just couldn't nothing. get arrested. He couldn't get arrested. I mean, the guy the 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 guy it was a longtime senator and knew things and uh, people were uh, people the only time that he ever made the news was whenever he was responding to something that Trump did um, right so it's a marketing strategy as well right it's it's there it it's is. marketing right. yeah um, it's it's a very clever piece of marketing that um, uh, has its origins I think in uh, more obviously or overtly commercial enterprises okay. than politics and we're not saying that politics is not a commercial Doesn't enterprise happen. it is <laughs> yeah. um, but uh, this is sort of an overt sort of transplantation of a marketing strategy into democratic politics at a level so it's sort of these are both means of controlling what the national conversation is about in a way that makes the topic of that non of that national conversation non-valuable right and it's a con and it, right and it's part of this branding feature right and so there's something almost um, it's more branding and less communicative strangely right because uh, what there, there, there was this regular reply that seemed to happen uh, uh, where where people were saying that uh, people were failing to take Trump seriously. They were only taking him literally. Right. <laughs> um, and uh, and so this seems to be a, a sort of a phenomenon where taking him seriously seems to have meant that he was expressing something with these and that paying attention and sort of doing fine detail hermeneutic work right. on on a tweet or something like that was to go the wrong way it's to sort of no it's to kind of stand back like an impressionistic painting and see it from a distance see see the swaths don't look at it one tweet at a time or set a a couple tweets he's expressing something right and he's he's being himself letting trump be trump and things like right. that uh so this brand of being someone who's a, strangely enough, there's the sort of the he's a straight shooter. He speaks his mind, but it's unclear what <laughs> what it means. Um, yeah, and so think yeah. about the, uh, uh, the 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 remark about uh, you saw what what went on last night in Sweden. Sweden, <laughs> right? Yeah, right. Where, as it turns out, so it was not, so it was in the context of talking about terror attacks, you know, throughout Europe, especially in places that have taken on a lot of immigrants, like Sweden. Um, then the claim, did you see what went on last night in Sweden? Seemed to lots of people to think like Donald Trump has just referenced an event in Sweden that occurred last night. And rather I don't know than, anything about it. Rather than his seeing something last night that was aired on Fox News right. about, about Sweden. Sweden. That was the thing that, that I think was being communicated. I saw a program last night about what's going on in Sweden. Not there was something going on in Sweden last night. Got it. So by last night, he meant what he saw, what he saw last night, which not was a what show. happened. It was not an event, right? The not, event was a television event. That's exactly. 
Think Good of her the, work there. So we think of all the, but think of all the right. airtime, right? And ink, bandwidth, comments. Go think of everything that went into trying to decipher this, and think of all the ways in which the more obvious critical stances one can take. This is fear mongering. There, in fact, was no terror attack. There, in fact. <clears throat> Uh, isn't a rape epidemic, right? Uh, in 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 Sweden, in in the way that um, uh, 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 had been suggested. Think of all the effort that went on both sides, even among Trump supporters, about right. what to he could have meant. Right, right. Yep. And then it turns out, oh, he, he saw. He was talking about a television show. It's like there was. This was like three or four days worth of news about Sweden. And the Swedes got in on it too. And the Swedes got in on it too. <laughs> and before you know it, it's oh, there were, uh, and and nothing. the noise, right? And yeah. so the the noise freak, the noise to light or the what signal is it? to signal noise. noise. Thanks. Yeah. Signal heat to noise. Light, signal to noise. Right. Heat to light and signal to noise. Signal to noise ratio was way off on this. Moreover, it's all noise. And right. And the important part is that it's that maybe swamping in this regard has also got a kind of cloak element to it, right? It's a kind of cloaking device uh, because what happened, because what we were talking about was Donald Trump saying something about Sweden and we weren't talking about the fact that Scott Pruitt, uh, the, 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 the new head of the EPA, is really, really chummy with, the, oh, with exactly yeah. the people that he should be regulating. Um, so we have a number of these sorts of cases where we where something important is actually happening. Somebody had to stand. Somebody had to had to step down because of right. yeah. uh, inappropriate yeah. communications with a foreign government. That's right. So right, Flynn had right because of Flynn. Uh, right. We and and so what do you do? You just say get out there, say something controversial, say something wild. Just go wild. Just go hog wild. Do do what you like. Why? Because. No one can then see the how. Uh, no one can see the fire back here, right? We'll put right. it out eventually, maybe. Right, and it's it's not merely just sort of misdirection. When the president of the United States references some, appears even appears to be referencing some event in a foreign country that, in the context of talking about terrorism. It is the job of the journalists and the newspapers and the reporters and the commentators. Right. To go find to investigate, it out. Right, yeah. to talk about that. Because he's the one who's getting the security reports. If it's if he's telling us about it from Fox News, that's different than yeah. if he's telling us about it. It's like this is what happened in Sweden last night, and somebody like somebody's in the background is like, no, not not Ixnay on the Eden Sway yet, yeah. right? Uh, so no. it is a kind of playing. It's sort of it's playing. It's it's playing on the vulnerabilities of people's professional responsibilities. It looks like these are not just yeah, like no. these are not journalists. The, the enemies of the people going after Trump. Yeah. It's their job when a president, whoever it is, right. references... This isn't gotcha journalism yeah, now. <laughs> right. References a terror incident in some foreign country. You've got to go try to find out what that is. And if you can't find it, that has to be news. So notice, by the way, that he's been doing this before he was president, though. Right. I mean, he, so it's all of these, believe me, right. right. Yeah. The uh, people are saying uh, this is, uh, but those are all features of him being a private citizen. Still objectionable. But it looks like the demands on this change whenever you are the chief executive of a government. Yeah. Thanks, folks. Philosophy 15. We'll see you next time.